Let's stop this free agency. Let some more y'all get up in here. We talking free agency, car. What's that like? You know, like yeah. Talking free agency, cousin. Let a few more, few more of y'all get up in here. Oh, now I should be live. What's up with y'all? What's up? What's up? Tap on up in here. Yeah, just talking about the first night of free agency. See what you guys feel about that. Y'all pickups and whatnots. I'm going to just go down the list of people we got so far. You know, this is considered the legal tampering period. This is the time that teams can talk to free agents and, and set up deals, if you want to call that. <clears throat> But the official league year don't start until the 3rd. I mean, until the 15th on Wednesday. I don't know why I say the 3rd. On the 3rd day, Jesus rules. But on the 3rd day, free agency starts as well. Coincidence? I think not. Sorry, bug me. I make sure I'm, my battery ain't dying on y'all. This is a quick joint, but it's the first day of the 2023 season, and we tapped in all 2023. We are tapped in all 2023. All 2023, we tapped in. First night of free agency. All right, we're just going to go through these real quick. Because then I'm going to eat. I made some pork chops, some homemade gravy. Ooh, la gasolina. First one, Jamel Dean, four-year, $52 million deal to the Falcons. No, no, no. Hold on. I mean to the Bucks. Sorry. <clears throat> yeah, that, I was just that. All right. We'll pass it out. First one we're talking about. The Bucks, Jamel Dean, four year, fifty two million. 
Um, now, the Bucks did need to show up the back end of the defense. However, y'all were 7-9 and nine for a reason. 8-9, and nine, whatever y'all were. 8-9. and nine. Your offense wasn't the greatest. Your defense was actually pretty solid. You really need uh, better offense, to be honest with you. Offensive line, running backs, some weapons outside of Chris Godwin, Mark e- Mike Evans. Um, <clears throat> obviously, you need a replacement for Tom Brady. They said they were in on Jimmy G. I don't know why, but they're, that's no longer a thing because he went somewhere else. We'll talk about him. Jimmy G, finally off the Niners. Lord. Thank you, Lord. Lord. Jimmy J is not in here. Hold on, sorry. Let me check DC real quick. All right. So, yeah, Jamel Dean's, uh, it's okay. I wouldn't give them that much money, but they probably had to overpay just being who they are um, and where they fit at into the discussion of the NFC. I mean, because at the end of the day, it is the 49 Sorry, I'm sweating. It's hot back here. I ain't in Pennsylvania no more. It's hot. Outside of the 49ers, the Eagles, and the Cowboys, um, <clears throat> I mean, that is that is pretty much the NFC, if you really think about it. The Giants are trying to make a few moves. I like what the Falcons are doing. We're actually going to talk about them. But Jamel Deans for the Bucks, eh, that's okay. It's nothing crazy. Um, next we have Jesse Bates, four years, 64.02 million, rather specific, rather specific. Make sure y'all drink your water, too. Let me see if you can get this. This is a half gallon. I try to drink two of these a day, at least one. Falcons, Jesse Bates, four years, 64 million. <clears throat> about 13 ish uh, a year. That's about where I would have had him at um, because he wasn't the greatest. He did give up a lot. But at the end of the day, not everyone can be the number one safety in the league. We're going to have to have one through 64. If you talk about free safety and strong safeties. But <clears throat> he's a top 15 uh, safety, so I like what the Falcons are doing. The Falcons said, you know what, there's no Tom Brady. Um, <laughs> I agree with that. Um, it is rather an oxymoron, the fact that they call it legal tampering. Isn't that an oxymoron? Um, I I guess it's a way for them to draw content when there isn't really any. And so they don't have just one day of a whole bunch of signings and drowning out a bunch of other noise. The NFL is with one thing the NFL is great at is marketing. They are marketing geniuses. Every week, the NFL is the number one rated TV show on. You have people that don't really ever watch the NFL that are currently watching the NFL. It is a very intriguing brand and they're doing very well. Um, but Jesse Bates, four years, 64. I like what the Falcons are trying to do because now that Tom Brady is not in the NFC South, the NFC South is wide open. That's why I like what um, the Saints did with uh, their car because the NFC South is wide open. So may the best team win. Bears trying to make some moves. Tremaine Edmonds, four years, seventy-two million. Eh. Um, I think the league is starting to go back towards the ground and pound, and they're showing that, especially what the Eagles have done. And that's why the 49ers picked up um, Javon Hargrave, um, because teams are starting to. Really go back to the rushing attack, the run up the middle, the the year of the Austin Ecklers and sadly the CMCs and things like that is going to go by the wayside eventually. The league now teams are starting to draft towards um, 
uh, defense's weaknesses. A lot of defenses are, are prone to getting after the passer and not really um, do well against the rush, et cetera. So um, Tremaine is a liability in the run game. That's why the the, the uh, Buffalo Bills were not reluctant to let him go. That's why they let him go because – He's a liability in the run game. He's great in the pass game, but he's a liability in the run game. The Bears have a solid defense, so I'm not mad at them. But they, you know, now that Aaron Rodgers is pot- potentially leaving uh, the Packers, the NFC North is going to be wide open as well. So um, they're really going to be competing with the Lions and the Vikings for that NFC North title. And the Vikings' offense is good, but their defense isn't that great. Um, I mean, I guess that's a solid signing for their division because they do have a lot of pass heavy teams in their division, but as far as the NFC overall picture, Tremaine Edmonds is a little light in the arse to be handling some of these run teams like the Cowboys, the Eagles, 49ers, et cetera. Next one up, we got the Chiefs, Juwan Taylor, four year, 80 million. These tackles are going to get money because pass rushers are a commodity. People have to go up against Joey Bosa, Nick Bosa, and Micah Parsons and things of that nature. You need a solid, not just a left tackle anymore. It used to be the years where you could just get away with having a good left tackle. Now you need a solid right tackle as well, as 49ers shown, because Mike McNuggets have signed up elsewhere, and I'm glad that he's gone. I didn't even put him on this list um, because for what? Mike McNuggets, he's a bum. Come. But, oh, sorry. I like what the Chiefs are doing. They um, they were not able to re-sign their offensive tackles, so they said we're going to go out and get other ones and shore them up for at least a few years. Because we talked about this a few years ago when I used to do this more often, investment, protecting your investment. Patrick Holmes is your investment. You protect your investment. Simple as that. Uh, that's the reason the 49ers potentially didn't go to the Super Bowl for not protecting their investments. You need to protect your investment. Brad Purdy got hit on that right side. That's why they let Mike McGlinchey go. That was the right side of that line that was getting eaten up like that all year, the right side of the line. That right side of the line is what caused Trey Lance to get hurt. That right side of the line is what caused Jimmy G to get hurt and Brock Purdy. All three quarterbacks got hurt on the right side of the offensive line. We knew Mike McGlinchey was a was a liability, but however, Kyle Shanahan, for some reason, is very hard-headed. Um, but I like what the Chiefs do. They don't play any games. They're not content with just winning Super Bowls. They want to be a dynasty. Um, Juwan Taylor kind of stays hurt, so that's a, that's a little extra more than what I would have paid for Juwan Taylor. I would have paid like I got $80 million. Of course, I got $80 million. I got $256 million. I got $80 million. Duh. But uh, he's still a solid. He's he's a solid right tackle, left tackle. He's he's a swing tackle whenever he's healthy. But twenty million a year when he was hurt, I know nobody else was paying for that. But they they probably overpaid just because they wanted him. Um, one of the guys that let go went over to the Commanders. Um, Andrew Wiley. Three year, twenty four million. That's about right. Eight eight million a year. I mean, he ain't nothing to shake a stick at. He, you know, he's serviceable. He's not horrible. He's not great. He's middle of the road. But once again, you know, that's the nature of the beast. Not everybody's going to be the number one tackle in the league. So that's a solid pickup for the Commanders to protect um, <laughs> Sam Howe. <laughs> It's not bad. The biggest free agent signing of the offseason so far. <laughs> oh, Raiders. The Raiders are going to Raider at the end of the day. This is Josh McDaniels last year because he said, all right, give me my guy and I'm going to show you what I can do. You're going you're gonna to show us what you can do. What you can do is be mediocre at your job. You showed us what you were in Denver. Now you're about to show us where you are in Las Vegas. I don't understand how Josh McDaniels keeps getting jobs and Eric Bieniemy has to 
become the offensive coordinator for the Cardinals, a, uh, you know, a horrible franchise. Like Jimmy G. I'm glad he's gone. I'm glad that saga is over so people can really see how mediocre Jimmy G really is. My favorite, because this was actually a free agency crush of mine. 49ers, Jamal Hargrave. 21 million a year. <clears throat> Ooh, baby, it's worth it. Because we have rotational pieces. That's key. We have rotational pieces. And we needed another solid starter outside of um, Eric Armstead. Eric Armstead needed some milk in the end of the year. And Nick Bosa kept getting double teamed by the end of the year. They kept they were exhausted. So I'm, I'm fortunate and glad to see Nick Bosa had some help on the inside with Javon Hargrave. We upgraded our Javon's Ken Law. It was a bust. <clears throat> I didn't think highly of him anyway when we first got him. I didn't even know who he was, to be honest with you, when we picked him up. I knew we were going to get a defensive tackle, but I didn't know who Javon Kinlaw was, and he could stay wherever he was at. Hargrave is here. Falcons again. David Onyemata. Onyemara. <laughs> Sound like somebody used to say in middle school. Yeah, on your mata, chunk. Falcons, defensive tackle. They're showing up that defense. They're trying to make sure that defense gets a little bit better. That's what they needed. They needed some defense. Their offense was okay. Um, but they couldn't stop 28 points. So they got a they got a CB, I mean a safety. They got a DT, show up the middle. I like it. Once again, they're trying to win the division. Tom Brady is gone. Tom Brady is, you know, has retired from the Bucks. Um Derek Carr went to the Saints. Um, the Falcons weren't. They could have. Falcons could have won the division last year if they had a better defense. They kind of looked like the Falcons in the Super Bowl, the way they were giving up points, um, second half of games and whatnot. But I like what the Falcons are trying to do. Um, they're have to start with these mediocre picks, like the David Onyemata and Jesse Bates and whatnot. Jesse Bates is a mediocre. I don't want to say he's mediocre. Um, he's not a top five safety. He's probably top 10-ish range. He's not. <clears throat> yeah, he's not a top five, but 10-ish. Jesse Bates, uh, he gives up big plays. Um, susceptible to a double move. Playing too far inside, things like that. Um, as a safety, you got to be the last line of defense. You can't get caught peeking in the backfield. You can't get caught, you know, and all these other things. But yeah, I just want to come on real quick for the first day. The first day was, was pretty solid. Um, the biggest one being the Javon Hargrave going to the Eagle. I mean, going to the 49ers from the Eagles. Um, who do y'all think was your favorite pickup so far? Um, and as we get more, we're going to come back and tap in. I just wanted to come in real quick, 20 minutes, talk to y'all, see what y'all had to say. Um, tap in, let me know what y'all think. Make sure y'all share this live, subscribe so you can get notified when this content drops. This dope content, Bear Image Media, the Bull Geeks, be out. I'll holler at you.